now of Sunday, September 9th, 2018, in the last part of the lunar cycle of Akibis, what's it date to be when the choke cherries ripen. And every Sunday morning, I do a walk and talk, um, usually at the Elizabeth Hall wetlands. Um, so I'm due to be there in a half hour, but I have a skunk call at 6.30 in the a.m. now, so we've been meeting at 7. That's our kind of summer schedule. Obviously, we're going to have to change to 8 pretty quick here, um, and then eventually gets to 9 <laughs> as the winter progresses. Um, but right now it's 7 o'clock meetings. However, I do have a skunk call, um, so I need to go pick up that skunk. I can drop it off at the wetlands. And I want to check my badger trap, right, and pull it if there's no badger. Rained a bit last night. Um, don't know how that'll affect things today or what the even what the weather forecast is. So I have no idea what's going to unfold <laughs> for the rest of this round. But this morning, starting off with one skunk, check of the badger trap, and uh, heading down to the pond for my walk and talk. So I'm out here in Badgerland, and he did not go into the trap. I just pulled the trap out of the bush. Uh, the door was open when I got here. Now it's closed because I was yanking on it and stuff, but nobody in the trap. Bait's still there. Um, I'm gonna take the trap with me. And I think the next logical step out here, you know, is just to take note of where the badger is dug so far, and then maybe monitor over the next couple of days you know, just when I'm out this way, come check it out and see if there's any new activity, see if the badger's sticking around. If he's sticking around, I'll have to bring a trap back out and maybe conceal it in some way so he doesn't recognize it for the thing he already got into. <laughs> um, if it was him that got in there, but yeah, I don't think leaving the trap any more days here is gonna be fruitful uh, at this point. So we'll see what happens next. On to the skunk release. All right, skunky. Kind of old skunk, huh? <laughs> yeah, gray haired and everything. Grandma skunk or grandpa skunk, I think. What a beautiful morning it is out here. To my surprise, no students have showed up. <laughs> Which is fine by me, I just take a walk anyhow. So much to see this morning. These kingfishers, they've been flying past. Lots of mallards. As you saw the, the heron, great blue heron. There's also a night heron just in the reeds across the pond for me. Unfortunately, this GoPro doesn't have good telephoto. Or I would uh, get some film of it. But I'll show you what I can out here this morning. Thank you. 
So our crow patient survived the night perfectly fine and seems to be doing all right. She was up here on the perch all night in the back in that back corner. Um, I don't, you know, something about just the way she's behaving suggests to me that she can't fly it. I haven't seen her like f take a little flight even between the perches or even stretch out her wings and stuff. So I think she's going to be in here at least another night before I take her out and test her for um, for how well her wings are working. But probably today Mahoney and I will pull her out of here and give her a full rundown, a full body inspection at least. But yeah, she survived the night and it's doing good. I don't think she's got concussion or anything like that. Um, but she does have some kind of, well injury from being mauled by the dog, right? So we'll see. So it's monsters feeding time. I've just put about half a dozen crickets in here with him. Every day I missed him and introduced some crickets. Oh, he tried to grab one there, but he missed. Yeah, he'll, he'll finish him off within about an hour or so. He'll go hunting and find these crickets. Now he's mad because he missed his one. Yeah, he's a spooky guy, you know. He hangs out under the soil, just pops up like a trapdoor spider to eat the crickets. A lot of people are surprised that these, you know, a salamander could be a terrestrial animal. Um, these tiger salamanders spend almost their entire adult life in, in basically in the desert here. <laughs> <laughs> without a lot of moisture um they only return to you know open bodies of water usually when they're going to um mate make more salamanders <laughs> and then the you know the the little tadpoles of them they stay in the in the water but i guess in warmer climates they'll stay in the water a long time like they'll their metamorphosis into the adult um tiger salamander takes a long time in warmer climates if they got a body of water that's going to stick around but here on the prairie you know a lot of the bodies of water where they lay their eggs at the beginning of summer um are not here you know by midsummer they dry up so their their uh juveniles here you know, the tadpoles here have to develop a little quicker. They don't get to stick around and become mud dogs, as they're called in the in the more southern climates. And then, yeah, they leave the water once they've transformed into adults. And they don't come back unless they're going to mate. And they spend their whole, their whole life, you know, terrestrial. Um, not that they can't negotiate water or anything. They, they just don't. They live underground sometimes up to two feet underground you know and uh, they might only emerge when it's nice and moist and stuff they might come up to the surface or they might not like this guy I think was maybe brought to the surface by a storm oh let's see if he gets this yeah come on come on cricket look at him he just waits for the food to come to him doesn't try to chase it. It's an ambush predator. Turn around, cricket. Or do you know that monster's there? I don't think so, otherwise he'd be getting the heck out of the way. <coughs> Wonder if he's getting tired of eating crickets every day. I've been waiting for a, a kind of a moist day to release him. Actually, if I had thought about it this morning, it rained last night. Would have been good this morning, maybe even to release him. Oh, I'm just wait, waiting to see if he eats this cricket. But yeah, monster's doing well. Crazy big salamander. Alright, 
so we're gonna check out this crow a little more thoroughly than we have make sure he doesn't have any injuries when he was trying to get away from me in the enclosure just a minute ago he was spreading his wings and using them to jump from perch to perch so it looked pretty good Just stretching out each of his wings, feeling down the bones of the wings, making sure everything's looking right. Doesn't seem to have any really mangled wing feathers or anything. Check on his chest because that's where I saw like feathers were in a clump kind of moving off. You know, probably the dog took took him in its mouth and like a dog does, you know, give him that really violent shake. Oh, I see some feathers missing. Um, I think he might be bruised a little bit. A little bruised in the breast. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to move this hand. Some feathers missing and maybe a little bit of bruising. Doesn't feel like anything's broken. I don't feel no broken any. ribs. No, I don't feel that anymore. He's, he's not acting like he's in pain either. No, no. It just looks like he's got some bruises on his chest. Yeah, so he's probably going to be good. Mm, you know, in a day or two. Might as well give him a little bit of recovery time. There's no. Yeah, I think Hurry. he'll be fine. I think he just needs some food, water, time to rest up those muscles and let his bruises heal a bit. And yeah. He should be okay. All right. We'll go put you back in the enclosure.